Ooh. Ow. Well, at least I didn't pass out this time. What game am I in? Turn around. What will turning around do? Oh, I'm Shantae. Why am I Shantae? I thought it would be funny, and it is. Eh! Is that a cannonball? Who fires a cannonball into someone's house? Oh great, pirates. Now I have to go warn Scuttletown. Well, save Scuttletown. Shantae was developed by a little indie company known as Way Forward for the Game Boy Color and released on June 2nd of 2002. The Game Boy Advance had already been out for a year by this point. Suffice it to say, Shantae did not do very well, which means it is impossible to find a physical copy for less than $250. It's not cheap. Shantae in all regards is a Metroidvania. Yeah, you heard me right. A Metroidvania on the Game Boy Color that isn't Metroid or Castlevania. Who knew? I certainly didn't, seeing as I didn't even know the game existed until roughly a year and a half ago. Though, while it was released in June of 2002, the game itself had actually been concepted back in 1994 and started development in 1996. Shantae has undergone changes since her original concept. It's interesting how the game had a six year development cycle and by the time the game was ready, the GBC's life cycle was over. It's almost as if the game itself never stood a chance, and was meant to be a hidden gem. Ah! Shantae! I'm, I'm glad you made it! Risky stole my steam engine prototype and you must get it back before she uses it for no good! Yeah, well, I think we have a bigger problem there, Mimic. And what would that be? Really? Really. Okay, how can we stop her? I need you to go and find Bolo! He will help you stop Risky! Alright, well, have fun with that not burning to death thing. The story begins with Shantae, minding her own business, when suddenly a pirate ship fires a cannonball into her house. While being attacked by the ship, Shantae heads to Skittletown, a fishing town that she is hired to protect. Great job there, Shantae, you sure are doing a wonderful job protecting a burning town. In the process of trying to stop the pirate, she runs into her uncle Mimic, who informs Shantae that Risky Boots, a pirate captain, has stolen his steam engine prototype and that she must get it back. I should give some background info on Shantae. You see, in this world, every town has what's known as a guardian genie, who is pretty much paid to protect the town from anything that is a threat to it. And Shantae is only a half genie, meaning she doesn't have all that unlimited cosmic power. After chasing away Risky, Shantae is then tasked with finding four magic relics before Risky gets a hold of them. The first of these relics is the Dribble Stone, which is said to create infinite water. The location of the stone acts as our first dungeon, and where we get the first transformation dance. It's used in the same way as Samus's power-ups in the Metroid series by unlocking new paths that you previously couldn't use, but I'll touch on that later. The idea of each dungeon is to make your way to the imprisoned genies so you can gain the subsequent transformation dance. These genies allow you to reach new places and pathways not previously available to you. At least not with any ease. Each dungeon aside from the first has its own gimmick, such as the color changing gimmick in the Golem Mines, which gives you invulnerability to certain enemies and for certain platforms to either follow you or move away from you, making for some interesting platforming. Throughout your adventure, you run into several of Shantae's friends, and I can't tell how good of friends they all are. Mainly because it seems more like either they treat Shantae poorly, or she treats them poorly. Each one helps you get into the next dungeon, with the exception being the last, as it's another genie who helps you get into it. After being the final dungeon, you emerge to find that the genie who helped you is Risky Boots. She traps you and takes all four stones for herself. Shantae decides to go find her uncle Mimic, who suggests that she should find the highest point to see if she can't find Risky. Once finding this point, a magical talking telescope teleports Shantae to Risky's base for the final showdown, in which you climb into a giant robot that Risky created using the stones and the steam engine. Once destroyed, you battle Risky and make your escape from an erupting volcano. All right now, just follow my movements and you'll be transformed. Awesome. Can't wait to see- Into a spider. Wait, what? Nope, 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 nope. 
On top of the transformations, you can find Talisman to give your transformations attacks, as they can attack by default. You can also gain more attacks for Shantae to use by spending gems, which is the currency and is rarely dropped by enemies, but honestly, these really aren't worth it unless you don't get the talisman. The game is a lot of platforming and whipping people in the face with your hair. The game feels extremely well when trying to platform. Everything is precise and you never feel like the game is being cheap whenever you die as it tends to be your fault. Now oh, in certain cases. Combat is alright. Nothing really special here. Though, I will say I wish Shantae's hair was a bit longer seeing as you have to be really close to enemies to hit them. And they like to walk around, so you will get hit a lot. Though, that might just be me being bad at the game. But I figured the best strategy was to buy Vanishing Cream and run past them all, seeing as there are a lot of enemies and the areas are rather long. It should also be noted that the game has a live system. Once you run out of hearts or fall into a pit, you die and return to where you entered the area, so this can cause you to have to backtrack just to get back to the point where you died. Once you use up all of your lives, you have to sit through a very long screen just to hit continue. One nice thing about hitting continue is the game will load you back at your last save, but you'll maintain the items you've obtained and anything you've done in the world. Just be sure to save before turning the game off. Shantae controls well for a Game Boy Color game. The D-pad moves Shantae, up allows you to enter dungeons and towns, left and right allow you to walk, and down make Shantae duck into an adorable butt wiggle. Pressing B allows Shantae to attack with a hair whip, holding B allows Shantae to run, pressing up and B at the same time will use items, the A button will make Shantae jump, start opens the item menu, and select allows Shantae to transform with the power of dance. I'm gonna quickly touch on what button combos do what for transformation, so let's go. Down then left will turn you into a monkey, down and right will turn you into an elephant, down and A will turn you into a spider, and down and B will turn you into a harpy. The game is really well animated for a Game Boy Color game. I don't think I've ever seen a game as beautifully animated on this handheld. Considering most games only have four frames for each action, I also didn't expect this game to control as well as it does considering it being on a GBC. Now I do have some problems. In most cases, the game will only tell you the vague direction in which you need to go. Near the end, Mimic only tells you to go to the highest point to find Risky's base. Your first thought would be to go to the mountains you would be wrong. It wasn't until near the end of the game when I decided to use the items. Honestly, they never interested me seeing as I made it through fairly easily without them. Three out of four transformations become pretty much useless after you get the harpy transformation, as you can just fly around everything. This is both a pro and a con. Overall, I had a surprisingly good time playing the game. I had heard the game was good, but I figured it was all based on nostalgia. After playing, I understand why people love it. Had I known that such a gem was on the Game Boy Color, I would have played it sooner, but such is life. While the game was very enjoyable, it definitely is a product of its time. Being limited with only the D-pad and four buttons means that the complexity of what they wanted just felt kind of clunky. I would recommend the game, but only to people who grew up with a Game Boy and or people who are looking to get into the series. Odds are, if you have no interest in Game Boy games or old Metroidvanias, then this game probably won't be for you. I personally had a fun time with it, and in the end, I guess it's your decision whether or not to play it. Oh my god, did you see that? Yeah, was that a volcano? You bet your processor it was. That was great. I'm glad I went with your choice. You know, for once. Now, if you could just let me out, that'd be great. Um, actually... Y y you see, uh, <laughs> funny, funny thing, uh, I didn't think you would go along with what I'm about to have you do unless I trapped you first. What? We have a huge back catalog of games that need to be reviewed, so I figured that instead of letting you out, we just lightning round them. You ever just have that feeling of, yep, this is the day I killed GBC? More than you would think. Ah, good timing. Your right is here. W where is it going to take me? I don't know. It's kind of random on which it picks. 
The sooner I get this done, the sooner I can exit. Let's do this. Hey guys, thanks so much for watching this video. If you enjoyed it, feel free to check out some of my other videos. Also, if you want to see more videos like this in the future, then hit that subscribe button. Also, big thank you to Storm Chris and Vipsy for lending their voices to this video. If you want to go check out their channels, you can click the links in the description below. Not bad, one year of GBC Tyler. Honestly, I thought there'd be more videos by now. Oh well, such is life. Anywho, I'm GBC Tyler, and I'll see you guys next time.